Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. Since Juno is out, and it sadly does not provide an upgrade path, you'll have to complete a reinstall. It might be time to think of your partition layout, so let's see how to set up a custom partitioning scheme. A fair warning. Be warned, playing with partitions and reinstalling is a destructive operation. You might lose data if you're not careful. Please back up before installing and setting up your partitions. This little video is only here to show you what is possible, but you have to be careful while identifying your disks and resizing or deleting partitions. Installing Juno The installation is easy. Download the Juno ISO file from the Elementary OS website. By default, they'll ask for a bit of money to help them keep the engines running, but if you just want to try it out before you decide if you like it or not, you can set a custom price of zero. Don't hesitate to reward the developers if you find the distro enjoyable, they'll surely appreciate it. Once the ISO is downloaded, plug in your USB key, open your USB creation tool such as Image Burner or Etcher, and burn the ISO on it. You just then have to reboot your computer. You might have to tweak the BIOS or EFI settings to start from the USB key, and then, in the end, you should see an installation screen pop up. Select Try Juno and make sure everything works. Wi-Fi, graphics, look at everything just to make sure that it works perfectly on your computer. Once you're on the desktop and you're ready to install, just open the Elementary OS installer from the Applications menu. Selecting Partitions During the install, Elementary OS will ask you a few questions, most notably how to install. You'll have three options. Erase disk and install Elementary. This one is to be used with caution. It will wipe the entire disk and erase any OS or files you already might have, and use all the space in the disk to create a single partition for the system and the user directories of slash home. This is the easiest if you already have backed up your system and you want to only use Elementary OS. Install alongside system. If you already have an OS installed, Elementary will offer to resize its partition and install alongside that OS. If you already have a Windows install, for example, or another Linux distro you want to keep, this is the option to choose. And the third option is named something else. This will allow you to pick the partition setup you want to use. This is the option we want to look at today. Setting up partitions. Once you've selected the something else option, you'll see a screen that looks like this. All drives will be shown here with their identifier, SDA, SDB, SDC, etc. You need to identify the drive you want to install on. On each drive, you'll see the existing partitions with their number, SDA1, SDA2, etc. Now you want to create enough space for installing the system, so you'll need to either reuse an existing partition or create some free space to install on. If you need to resize partitions to make some free space, you can use the Gpart tool which is already installed on Juno's live USB. Once again, be careful, moving or resizing partitions might result in a loss of data. Here I'll just delete the existing partition to free up some space, so I'll select the partition and click the minus icon. My partition will be deleted and free space will be created in its place. At this stage, the modification I asked for isn't really being applied. My partition still exists, and if I leave the installer, nothing will have been changed. Now we'll want to create a partition on which to install the system. On the Elementary and Linux, the system is installed in the slash directory. So let's select our free space and create a new partition by clicking the plus icon. A little window will pop up to let you change the settings of that partition. You can select the size of the partition you need. I'd like to use 30 GB, which should be plenty for the base system and programs, but if you have more space to spare, anything goes. You can select a primary partition or a logical one. You can only have four primary partitions at any given time on a system, so if you have many operating systems, you might be limited. A logical partition is a virtual partition, which you can use to store data. You can have as many of these as you want, so if you like to compartiment things, you can go for a logical partition. Here, for Elementary Juno, we'll select Primary since our drive only has one partition. Since we only have this free space available, we'll select the partition to start at the beginning of the free space. That is not that important in our case, but if you had a specific partition before this free space, that you wanted to delete afterwards, you could choose to start the partition at the end of the space, to make sure you can reunite all free space and not have two small compartments of free space that you can't put together in a bigger one. Then, the file system. Linux and Elementary mostly uses X4 these days. There are plenty of other choices, each with advantages and drawbacks, but X4 is the default and works well enough, so we'll keep it at that. We might go into details on which file system is better for what operations in a later video. Finally, the mount point. This is the folder your partition will be available on. On Linux, there are no separate drive letters like on Windows. 
Every drive is assigned to a folder on the main file system, which is called slash. This is called mounting. You mount a partition on a folder. So any partition you create must have a mount point to indicate from which folder it is accessible. Here we need the first partition, which is the main system partition. It is mandatory. So we'll select slash as a mount point. Without a slash partition, you can have a system. As of now, we could start the install and let it complete. By default, if you don't create any other partitions or mount points, all other folders within the slash folder will be inside your main partition. But what if we want to separate it a little more? For example, I'd like to have a separate partition for my user files. We still have some free space left, so let's use it. Just select the free space available and create a new partition. I'll make it a primary one, but it could be a logical one as well on a system with multiple OSs. Now I'll keep X4 as the file system and select the mount point, slash home. Slash home is the user's directory where all files from all users will be stored. Think of it as having a My Documents folder on a separate partition. Why would you do that? Well, it's pretty simple. This allows you to reinstall just the base system without deleting any of your personal files which are stored on a separate partition. But this doesn't end here. You can have a lot more folders on different partitions. For example, you could have the slash boot folder, the one where your bootloader is stored, on a separate partition. This might even be required if you want to encrypt your slash drive. For a server, having a separate partition for the slash tmp folder where all temporary files are stored might be a way of preventing your hard drive saturation. Or, for example, having slash opt where all compiled programs will go might be a good idea if you want to reinstall without losing everything you compiled. Once you're happy with your partition setup, just hit install and your system will be all set. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. Of course, we could go more in depth with this, but I think it's a first step towards making a custom partition layout. I hope to see you guys in the next one, and goodbye. If you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter at the Linux EXP. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.